Hey everybody, this is Chuck. I am uh, building the CNC router parts CRP4848. I'm going to kind of make this a pseudo build log uh, just to kind of document some thoughts and um, concerns up to this point for uh, people trying to get into it and kind of tips to kind of help out beginners. So, um, real quick and dirty, here's what we got. Got the full kit from uh, CNC router parts. Uh, 4848, all the pro upgrades, NEMA 23 with the Gecko 540 stepper. Um, real nicely packaged, complete. Got the cable track kit right there, and I got the uh, proximity limit switches. Um, I just <coughs> finished uh, building the base here, um, and I'll kind of go through and kind of talk about how I did it, how I overcame some of the challenges, and hopefully that'll help you guys out. A disclaimer before we get started is I'm no expert, so things that work for me, we'll see how they pan out. If they work for you, great. Uh, they may not even be right, but if they work, they work. Okay, so assembling the base, here's what you got. You got these little angle brackets right here. These are half-inch nuts right here. Um, they're T-bolts that fit into the T-slot extrusion. One of the things that you're going to find is going to be a pain in the ass is putting the bolts in and you have to twist them to the right so that the T is up and down because if you don't the T will align with the the T slot and come out so before you tighten any of these down what I used what I used here was just a little flashlight and I would look down the rail and make sure that I could see I don't know if you could see it right now here we'll check it on this one look down the rail and make sure that that T-socket head is inside the extrusion fully in the T position. I don't know if you could see it that well. There you go. Make sure that's done for each one of them. Uh, every bolt that I did on here was Loctited. Here's what I used. Um, this little blue thread locker. It's removable, medium strength. Don't use the red stuff. It's uh, super duty. Um, I could not fit a socket in there, so just a half inch Craftsman wrench. That works good too. Okay. Um, kind of talk about some of the, uh, some of the headaches here. Okay, so the table that this is on is made out of 4x4s four and a combination of 2x4s, uh, plywood, bracing, and a 3 quarter inch uh, particle board top for uh, the top here and the bottom. Um, one of the biggest things in building this base is making sure that it's square and level. Um, now the problem that I'm that I ran into was my table top is not level. Um, the table is built to within a thirty second thousandth of an inch, but the top of that particle board hasn't been planed or anything like that, so it's impossible to get it level. So you have a few options there. You can spend a bunch of time to try and level it at this stage, or if you're building and you're building with a non-level surface, which most garage floors are not, the best thing to do is make sure that you build and create a reference point. For example, on the side here, you could see that I've lined up the extrusions with each side, okay? And there's a little bit of gap that happens because of that. As long as I'm consistent in doing this to all the sides everywhere on the extrusion, then Later on, when it comes time to level and I have a better, better uh, place to level from, such as when I'm securing this to the tabletop, I can shim just this whole base and I can be sure that it'll level because I'm not putting all the, the um, extension beams in um, and just kind of leveling to the table, which is not level at all. So create a reference point for yourself. I use this right here. And the other thing was making sure that I was flush here and here. Now, this is difficult to do. This um, length is 50 inches. Okay, um, so here's what I came up with. Two of these bad boys right here. These are 36-inch Harbor Freight Special 599 bar clamps. Okay. I take both of those and I stretch them across the length of the extrusion. I use these ends right here and put it around the extrusion like this, okay? Now this, it won't fit around over there. So that's when I take the other one and clamp 
just like this. It's kind of a ghetto rig, but it seems to work. And it worked for me. You kind of position them like this. So you have this end on this extrusion. You have this end on that extrusion. And you kind of butt these two up together. And what I did was take this face and put it up against here and then just turn the clamp and tighten it down. You really got to be careful and pull that uh, knob here onto the face of that metal a bunch of different times to make sure that it seats correctly. But that pulls your extrusion together and allows you to get flush on the corners. And I did that to all my corners. And now my length from extrusion to extrusion from this tip to this tip is perfectly squared with that tip to that tip. So I know that I got a good square frame. I just need to deal with my level issues later. And we'll kind of get into more of that in a few later videos. Okay, uh, that's where I'm at so far. Sorry about the bad video quality. I'm using my iPad here. I don't have a video camera. Um, show you another quick thing I'm working on. A little electronics enclosure for my G540 and my power supplies. Just kind of made it out of wood. I'm going to put some plexiglass windows in here on the sides. Um, put some fans on the top in there. Um, I'm going to have all the cables in the whole system come in through the top here and then into and then put the gecko on the front face here and have even the stepper wires come in through here and then out a hole in the front into the gecko. So everything routes through the top of this box. So that should be pretty good. Okay, um, again, this is a CRP4848 build. This is Chuck. Thanks for watching, and see you guys soon. See ya.